From a surreal flash flood in the middle of a Chilean desert, and a violent hailstorm during a concert in China, to an EF3 tornado tearing down a gymnasium wall and a rescue vessel caught in a terrifying storm. Here are some of the most extreme weather moments ever caught on camera. Based on its urban population, Baotou is the largest city in Inner Mongolia, an autonomous region of China. The word Baotou translates to place with deer, but it's more like place with rare earth minerals as they are China's primary source. A powerful tornado touched down near Swan Lake, a tourist resort full of authentic Mongolian yurts, or ancient East Asian tents. Onlookers sought shelter as the storm ripped through the resort, and one pulled out their camera to record as it passed over their tent. The tornado is literally knocking on their door as it approaches Swan Lake Resort. The camera cuts to the moments before the storm passes overhead, and our cameraman is forced to take cover inside his tent. The light disappears as the storm passes over, but we can still hear breaking glass and destruction outside. He finally takes cover under a table, and we see the inside of his tent ripped to shreds. According to Chinese state-run media, the tornado injured 33 people but didn't claim any lives. The tornado touched down around 3.30 p.m. and damaged over 100 yurts on its path of destruction. Emergency workers took the injured tourists and staff to the local hospital, where doctors described three of them as in critical condition. Clearly, these yurts weren't built to withstand extreme weather. Then again, tornadoes are pretty rare in China, as they are more concerned about monsoons and floods. Guam, the Philippines, and South China all braced for impact in September of 2018. That's because Typhoon Mangkut, also known as Ampong in the Philippines, was heading straight for them. The Category 5 storm was technically considered a super typhoon, though it was only the third strongest in 2018. Still, Mankut left a massive trail of destruction in its path. It caused over $3.77 billion in damage to several countries, and claimed 134 lives, including 127 in the Philippines, 6 in mainland China, and 1 in Taiwan. A terrifying compilation of footage from around Guangdong province shows how powerful 100 mile per hour winds really are.
Wind whips past the camera, visibility is basically zero, and anything that isn't bolted down doesn't stand a chance. We watch Mankut tear a tree up by its roots and the entire roof off of a gym. People run for their lives in what looks like a train station, and pedestrians get swept off their feet and pushed several yards down the road. The wind pushes a massive crane off of a rooftop and even shakes an entire apartment complex. So what's the difference between hurricanes and typhoons? Well, there actually isn't one. According to National Geographic, they're just two different names for the same storm, it just depends on location. Storms forming in the Western Hemisphere are called hurricanes, whereas storms in the Eastern Hemisphere are called typhoons. The word hurricane comes from the Caribbean god of evil, Hurricane. However, we don't know where the word typhoon comes from. Our best guess is Persian, Arabic, or Chinese words for strong storms. The Atacama Desert in Chile is known as the driest place on Earth. It is a 990-mile stretch of land between the Pacific Ocean and the Andes Mountains, and is scarcely populated by humans, except for a few small towns near the coast. It's so arid in some parts that plant and animal life, even the most desert-friendly reptiles, can't survive. But in the spring of 2015, the Atacama went from being the driest place on Earth to the wettest place on Earth. That year, a series of massive floods and mud flows ripped through northern Chile and Peru when an unusual cold front moved across the Andes and brought heavy rains to the region. The footage emerging from some of these villages looked like it was straight out of an apocalypse movie. Our cameraman watches helplessly as the literal avalanche of mud and water washes everything away. It carries cars and trucks like bathtub toys. Soon, an entire roof floats across the screen, and onlookers can hardly believe what they're seeing. Water keeps getting higher and higher, eventually flooding the platform they're standing on and forcing our cameraman indoors. President Michelle Bachelet declared a state of emergency when the flooding didn't let up and reports indicated that the disaster affected more than 27,000 people. The water destroyed 105 homes and severely damaged 5,900 more. According to The Guardian, torrential rain caused the Copiapo River to overflow, leading to the flood. In fact, the rain was seen as a blessing at first, as droughts and high temperatures caused wildfires to burn 93,000 hectares of land between the 2014 and 2015 season. While the people in the area wanted rain, they certainly got more than they asked for. Early March of 2022 was a turbulent time for northern Texas. Hailstorms, tornadoes, powerful wind, and even a full-on blizzard rocked the area. One place hit especially hard was the city of Jacksboro. On March 21st, a tornado touched down near the small city. It was one of ten that the storm would end up spawning. 
This one quickly grew to reach EF3 status, with winds of 140 to 150 miles per hour. Security camera footage released by the Jacksboro Independent School District captured the moment the tornado struck. In one hallway, you see the power flicker only moments before the ceiling is destroyed, leaving the camera pointing up towards the ductwork and wiring. In another clip, we see the school gymnasium wall being blown down, with what appears to be insulation thrown about. If you look closely, it almost seems like the tornado is inside the gym. Another shot from a different gym shows a similar scene. The wall collapses, exposing the interior to elements. As the tornado passes, the image clears up, and we can see the extent of the damage. Hell, you can even see the sun shining through. There is some good news, however. Despite the damage, there were no fatalities or even injuries reported. Thankfully, the rest of the school held up. The tornado actually hit two schools, the elementary and high school, which is why you see the two different gyms. Classes had to be cancelled for a week for crews to begin repairs, and when the students came back, they were still very much underway. After seeing the footage, I think everyone was just happy that nobody was injured in this terrifying storm. Qinghai is a landlocked province in central China, northeast of the Tibetan Autonomous Zone. Also known as Kokonor, it's the fourth largest province in China by land mass, yet the third smallest by population. Only 5.9 million people, which is basically nothing in China. They're known for iron and steel production, but only contribute about 0.35% to the entire Chinese economy. But if egg-sized hailstones were worth their weight in Yuan, Qinghai would be filthy rich. On August 9th of 2022, a freak hailstorm hit Qinghai province, dropping massive hailstones on many people, tents, cars, crops, and sheep that dared stand underneath. Several clips from around the province show how destructive falling balls of ice can be. The footage opens at what looks like a festival, but the good vibes are nowhere in sight. Massive hailstones force everyone into their cars and tents. Some even seek cover under folding tables. One guy holds a hailstone in his hand, and you can see how big it is by comparison. And uh, we're not gonna lie, we were hoping those Pepsi bottles would explode. Reports indicated that 25 people got hurt in the storm and the hail damaged 739 cars across the city of Haichi. But worst of all, 135 sheep perished in the hail shower. Now, based on what we know about hail, an egg-sized rock could fall from the sky between 44 and 72 miles per hour. That's assuming the average egg in your fridge is a little over 2 inches. Now, you shouldn't need experts to warn you not to stand outside when egg-sized hail is falling from the sky. At least, not without a helmet. The North Sea can be as treacherous as it is giving. Seven countries in Northern Europe border the North Sea and rely on it for fishing, oil, and trade routes. But when the weather turns on them and the waves grow taller than the commercial ships, they all rely on emergency rescue and recovery vessels, or ERRVs, to save the day. ERRVs are built to withstand the roughest waters around. So, when a series of powerful storms hit in December of 2018, one ERRV spent a month at sea looking for lost and distressed ships. 
though it's hard to imagine anything smaller than the vessel in this video surviving in the North Sea. Massive waves crash towards the cockpit and block visibility for a moment before the wipers do their job. Then our cameraman pans across all the windows to give us a clear view of the rough water. At one point, the vessel seems like it's pointing straight up as it goes over one of the final waves. Now it's possible that this ERRV was traveling through windstorm Deirdre, which struck between December 15th and 17th of 2018. Winds blew upwards of 79 miles per hour, though we don't know the kind of damage the storm caused either on land or at sea. The UK, Ireland, and the Netherlands began naming winter wind storms in 2015, similar to how hurricanes are named in the United States. A little over 200,000 people live in Des Moines, Iowa, making it the most populated city in the state. It was built on and named after the Des Moines River, which likely derives from the French name Rivière des Moines, or River of the Monks. So yes, Des Moines, Iowa is basically the city of the monks. But the monks had a hard time praying the rain away when a powerful derecho tore through the city and most of the Midwestern United States. Winds blew upwards of 70 miles per hour, producing small tornadoes in the region. They were strong enough to snap trees and cause minor damage, as seen in this video from one resident's front porch. Oh. The wind keeps blowing and the branches keep falling, eventually covering the ground with fragments of broken trees. Now, while the debris isn't that bad initially, much larger branches start falling closer to our cameraman's house, the kind that could cause severe damage to the roof if it hits just right. Derechos are literally the perfect storm. They can cause hurricane force winds, flash floods, tornadoes, and torrential rain all wrapped up in one fast moving storm. They're straight line wind storms, meaning they only move in one direction. Now, this particular derecho lasted for 14 hours between August 10th and 11th of 2020. By October of 2020, the damage caused was estimated to be as high as $11 billion, making it the most costly thunderstorm in US history. Power outages affected 1.9 million people, and 300,000 residents across Iowa and Illinois didn't have any power restored for three days. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.